This is a guaranteed way to get more views on YouTube. It's a big part of our YouTube thumbnail design strategy and it regularly increases our click-through rate by up to 50%. So what I'm talking about is A-B split testing your thumbnail images. And this is a super important element of our thumbnail strategy. Now to show you how powerful this strategy is, here's two thumbnail images from our channel. I want you guys that are watching this to pick left or right. Which one do you think is the better thumbnail? Which one do you think gets more clicks. So we've actually run an A-B split test on this and you can see that one of these outperformed the other one by 55.7%. So the winner here was the one on the right. So let's go again. Here's another A-B split test we've run from thumbnail images from a video on our channel. Which one do you think is the better thumbnail image? Or which one do you think gets clicked more? The one on the left or the one on the right? And one of these two here outperformed the other one by 45.2%. And the winner here is actually the one on the left. Now this one personally, it pains me a little bit. I mean, I personally don't like the image. I think it's washed out, it's too bright. I mean, why am I wearing a hoodie? I look like I'm 12 years old. But again, it's not about what we think is the nicer or prettier looking thumbnail. It's which one gets clicked more. Now, got one more example for you because I really want to hit this point home. Left or right? And the difference between these this time was 33.8% increase. So the winner here was the one on the right. Now this is another one where I thought the yellow one would have outperformed. It's brighter colors, it's gonna stand out more on the platform. A lot of people aren't using dark mode. So maybe the white one could get lost on the YouTube page, but no, it was actually the white one here that outperformed the other one. So the point I wanna make here is that your thumbnail strategy and your thumbnail images are so important. And you might be thinking now that your thumbnail images are great and they're already working for you, but what if they could work better? What if every time YouTube featured one of your videos or showed it on the platform, it was able to be clicked more? For days, weeks, potentially years down the track, if your video can show up and get clicked more, think about that for the growth of your channel, for the impact into your life and your business, if your video was actually viewed more. And that's where this strategy is so powerful because it's not what we think is the nicer or prettier looking thumbnail image. We're literally looking at the data and we're seeing which image actually gets clicked more, which can have a massive effect. So I'm gonna share with you some of the insights that we've learned from A-B split testing our thumbnail images. But really quickly before that, the tool that we're using to run these A-B split tests is called TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy is an amazing YouTube management tool. There's got so much more in it than just A-B split tests, but having the ability in there to A-B split test your thumbnail images is one of my favorite features. Now pricing wise, there is a free version of TubeBuddy, but to be able to do the A-B split test, you do need to be on their legend plan, which currently costs $23.99 per month if you're paying annually. Now in terms of alternatives to do this A-B split testing, you could actually manually do it yourself for free if you created two different versions of a thumbnail image, maybe ran one for a while, tracked the data, tracked how well it was performing, and then swapped it out for another one. And then obviously track and measure that to, to gauge if there was an improvement or loss. It's gonna be super manual and it's definitely not gonna be as accurate as using something like TubeBuddy. And that's why we like it so much. Whereas to get these set up on TubeBuddy, we just wanna to go to their section here for A-B testing. Come up the top here to create an A-B test. You then pick the video that you wanna run the A-B test on and then you can select your alternate thumbnail image or the one you wanna test it against. So really simple. So normally where we're starting with these A-B split tests isn't on our brand new latest videos. It's on videos that have been up on our channel for a little while, but the ones that are underperforming compared to other videos on the channel. And this is to try and help them find traction and see if replacing the thumbnail image is actually gonna have a difference. But we also use these A-B split tests to test other things about our thumbnail image, to test if, they work better with my face on them or not. But we're also using it to test things like new thumbnail concepts and different design elements that we can bring in or remove from our thumbnail images. Like in the case of this one here with having me in the thumbnail image or not. And actually removing me in this case gave us a higher click-through rate. Or this one here where we tried a totally different concept for a lighting tutorial, showing the before and after, or comparing it to one with big text on screen explaining what the video is about. And in this case, this second thumbnail here outperformed the first one by 6.76%. And again, with these numbers, they don't need to be big. An improvement is an improvement. And that can flow through for years of that content on the platform. Or in this example, these two thumbnail images are almost identical. The only thing we changed was putting the company name, Insta360 here, in the thumbnail versus leaving it blank and having question marks. So the viewer didn't know what that video was about. So the viewer didn't know what the product was at that point just by looking at the thumbnail image. 
And it was this second one here without the company name in it that actually got a slightly better click-through rate, 2.17% in this case. So after running so many different A-B split tests on our thumbnail images, here's a few insights that we learned that might help you with yours too. You really wanna to try to make your thumbnail image as clear as possible. Help the viewer work out what your video is about and if it's for them just by looking at that thumbnail image. So in this video here, for example, best cheap smartphone accessories for video, you can see our original thumbnail image, it was much darker. It still had text on screen, but all the gear that I'm holding in that image that I'm talking about in the video, it's really hard to see because it's so dark. So then we tried something completely different, something much brighter, something that had the gear more laid out, but also something that had the writing stand out more, and this one actually performed better. And even switching the wording up and emphasizing the word cheap, because it was cheap gear that we're talking about in this video, making it red so that it stands out on the yellow, it tends to grab people's attention much, much faster. So with the text, you can experiment with it, but generally we wanna try to make sure that the emphasis is on the most important keyword or most important phrase that the viewer is going to be interested in. Again, to help them work out what the video is about and if it's for them. So for example, this video here around picking your YouTube channel name, what we thought we would test with this one, because it's an older video on our channel, we thought we'd test it with some big bold text. So you can see we've got here how to, and then a little bit smaller, pick your and then channel name. Now they've all been designed so they all fit nicely here into a square or into a rectangle, but the weighting on these words makes the how to the biggest and channel name, which is actually the most important piece, much, much smaller. So we thought it was worthy on a test because obviously I personally think it looks so much better than this old thumbnail image, but the older one, just with very simple basic text, how to pick your channel name, just with simple basic text with a box behind it versus the older thumbnail image here with the weighting applied differently to the text. So you can see that the how to is smaller, but the big words pick your channel name, they stand out so much more. Even though overall, I think the design of the newer thumbnail image is so much better. So we're running with the old one here. Now I've also tested quite a few times if actually having this color or this block behind the text to help it stand out, if it actually helps us get clicks on our thumbnail images. So in this case here, comparing these two, this image performed better. And in this one here, where we're really only testing for that, it actually did perform better in this case. So you can see that the thumbnail images outside of those colored boxes behind the text, the thumbnail images are exactly the same. But then looking at the one below it here, we've done almost the exact same test. This one here without the boxes behind the text and this one here with the boxes behind the text, you can see that this one here actually outperformed. So sometimes it's easy to draw conclusions with this stuff. Other times it can be hit and miss and come down to a video per video basis. But regardless, we keep coming back to our broader goal here of trying to make our thumbnail images engaging and easy to understand. Now, another thing we've seen a lot is that generally less text actually performs better but not always. So in this example here of a LumaFusion tutorial, you can see the one here with less text. It literally just says LumaFusion tutorial compared to the original one, LumaFusion, iPad, iPhone, and Android. But obviously in this specific one here, it's a whole different design and style and everything as well. But you can see how much cleaner it is with less text. And you can still quickly figure out what that video is about. And if we come down here to this one here, Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial for beginners, we can see the opposite. Whereas this one here, beginner's guide with the Premiere logo didn't get clicked as much as this one here, Adobe Premiere Pro Beginner's Guide. So it's got more text. But again, the thumbnail images are different. And it could be because we've got the text here, Adobe Premiere Pro, instead of just the logo. But again, I'm giving you some generalizations to help you with different things that you can play around with when you're split testing your thumbnail images. But even just changing the background color on your thumbnail images can make a big difference as well. Look at this one here, the exact same thumbnail image. I would have assumed and guessed that the yellow, the brighter color image would perform better because it's gonna stand out more. But testing it with the gray here, the gray one actually outperformed by 11.7%, which is definitely decent. So you should be trying and testing new stuff. And really your thumbnail images should be evolving with the more that you try and test and learn. And this is a big focus for us and our channel. So if you go back and have a look at the early thumbnail images on our channel from the first videos, I mean, they were terrible. There was nothing strategic about these images at all. And as we scroll up, you can actually see the evolution of the different tests and things that we were doing with these images. And then contrasting that with the ones right at the top here, the most recent ones, this is where we're now being so much more strategic with our thumbnail images and A-B split testing them all to get the best performance out of our investment in making videos. 
So again, the tool that we're using to run these A-B split tests and to be super strategic with our thumbnail images is TubeBuddy. And we'll have a link down in the description box below. Now, if you wanna learn how to make a thumbnail image for your videos and do it fast and free, then check out the video that is linked on screen and I'll see you in there.